Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Linux Server version 8.04 in VMware Server Console. Uh, before you begin you need a couple of things. First of all you need to have the VMware Server Console installed. I'm not going to show you that whole process uh, but I'll talk a little bit about it. It's a fairly standard install. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to go to vmware.com slash download slash server. Uh, you need to register for a free serial number. Once you fill in a little form, um, they will email you back right away a serial number you can use to complete the installation. Uh, and then you need to download the 1.x uh, VMware server. Um, 1.x, uh, right now it's at version 1.05. Um, what you want to avoid is don't, don't install the um, uh, version 2.0. Uh, beta even when it's out. It's a little bit different product and it's not going to work quite as well for you I don't think. So uh, look for the latest version of this VMware Server 1.x series, download that and install it. Now when you're installing that you may see this warning error pop up and it's telling you that IIS Server is not installed or improperly configured uh, and you probably don't have IIS Server installed on your local um, uh, home computer and you can ignore this message you won't need IIS Server um, or the VMware management interface for our purposes so when you see that message just click OK continue with the installation and don't worry about it. Now the next thing you need to have is the ISO file for uh, Ubuntu Server. Um, you can get that at ubuntu.com slash get ubuntu slash download uh, and of course you want the server edition because we're going to be installing server here I've covered uh, uh, installing desktop in another set of videos uh, this one I'm going to show you how to install server uh, and for what kind of computer you have um, uh, just go ahead and select standard personal computer even if your um, host computer is a 64-bit uh, computer. Um, the 32-bit uh, version uh, is what will work best in the VMware server. So I'm going to assume then that you've got both of those, uh, uh, both of those downloaded and, and ready to go and we'll fire up VMware Server Console and get started. At the opening screen select localhost. You can also connect to a, a remote um, a virtual machine but that doesn't apply in this case. When the uh, VMware loads after you uh, click the local host, uh, you may have another um, uh, item running uh, if you've installed some other virtual machines. Uh, if you see this screen, you can click here, New Virtual Machine, otherwise File New Virtual Machine. Uh, either way, we'll get you a wizard running. So I'll click New Virtual Machine, and it's going to start the wizard. Uh, I'm going to do a typical uh, installation machine configuration, no need to do anything custom. Uh, it's going to be Linux and I will select Ubuntu. Uh, virtual machine name, I'll call this Ubuntu Server 804 uh, and it will by default place your um, uh, virtual machine in this location. Of course you can browse um, to a different location if you want to store it someplace else or if you want to store it on an external hard drive or some other device. Uh, I'm going to suggest you try to get bridge networking uh, going. Um, Bridge networking gives you the most flexibility, uh, puts you on the same subnet as your host computer, and makes some of the experiments you'll want to do more interesting. Uh, if for some reason you can't use bridge networking, you can come back and reconfigure this to use network address translation. That will almost certainly uh, uh, certainly work. The other thing that you can do is you can select uh, use network address translation to begin with, uh, and then switch back over to bridge networking once you figure out what any issues or problems might be. But I'm going to suggest you try bridge networking from the start. Uh, you need to select the disk size um, and the disk can never be larger than the maximum size you select here so give this some thought. If you're just doing this for some simple experimentation configuration experience you probably don't need a very large virtual uh, machine. Uh, the operating system itself takes up around two gigabytes or so, uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, and so I'm going to suggest that for experimentation purposes, uh, this doesn't have to be much larger than about four gigabytes. But if you know that you're going to be doing other things or need more room than that, then um, be sure to get that um, um, uh, set at the start. 
I'm going to go ahead and allocate all the disk space now. Um, the install takes a little bit longer, uh, but it tends to run a little bit better uh, once you get going. And I'm also going to recommend um, that you split the disk into two gigabyte files. Um, what that does is make it uh, possible to install or copy your virtual machine over onto an external hard drive or external storage device that might have a two gigabyte file size limit on it. Uh, and then I'll click finish. And it's going to create the disk, and this takes a few minutes, as I say. It's now allocating all that disk space, uh, so I'm going to pause the recording, and I'll come back when that's done. All right, it's finished uh, uh, creating and allocating the disk space that we need. Uh, the next thing you need to do is edit virtual machine settings and set the CD-ROM so that it um, connects to the ISO file rather than your physical CD. Uh, so you downloaded the ISO server image, the Ubuntu ISO server image. So click Use ISO Image and then just go ahead and browse to wherever it is you saved that image. And here we go. Click open and um, that's pretty much all that we need to do. Uh, you can check the memory. Um, 512 is good for the server. Um, it will run on less. Um, uh, 380, about 384K is fine. Um, even 256, it really depends on how much uh, memory you have in your, uh, in your host computer. If you can spare 512 then that's, that's certainly a good number. Now what we need to do is start the machine and it should boot from that CD image. So I'll click start this virtual machine. Uh, VMware will boot. And in a few seconds we'll get the installation screen. Now a couple of words about this um, uh, virtual screen if you haven't watched any of my other uh, videos yet. Um, in order to capture the mouse and the keyboard um, inside the virtual machine window, you just need to click your mouse um, inside that window, and then that will uh, capture the keyboard and the mouse uh, inside the window. To release it so that you have access to it in your host system again, press the Control and Alt keys simultaneously, and that will bring your mouse back. Uh, so go ahead and click inside the virtual machine, select your language, uh, I'm going to do English. Uh, and then the first thing I would suggest is that you go ahead and check the CD for defects uh, just to make sure you didn't have a problem with the download. Better to find out about it now than later uh, when you're trying to figure out why the installation doesn't work. Uh, that'll take a few minutes. It uh, um, boots a, a little uh, check utility uh, and then when it's done, assuming that um, you didn't have any defects or there weren't any problems with the download, uh, it'll prompt you to hit enter and reboot and it'll bring you back to this screen. So we're just going to go ahead and um, uh, select install Ubuntu server, uh, press enter and away it'll go. takes a few seconds for it to uh, initially load uh, the installation routine. And the first thing we come to is the language. Now this is a text-based installation routine, uh, so your mouse is not going to work. Um, you still do have to click inside that window to capture the window, uh, but strictly text-based, so you'll be using all keyboard input. Uh, first thing to do is select the language. English will default. You can arrow up or down to others if you need to select them, and then press Enter. Uh, again, same thing with your location, United States. I'm going to select that. Um, pick wh whichever one is appropriate. Uh, I'm going to suggest that you don't detect the keyboard layout unless you're really not sure. The odds are pretty good that you have a US keyboard. Um, if you don't, you can select it from a list. Um, so I'm going to, uh, rather than try to detect it, which involves you typing in a bunch of, um, a bunch of keys and numbers, I'm going to suggest that you say no to that and pick your keyboard from a list. Um, I'm going to pick the USA keyboard, so I'll just press Enter there. Uh, and again, the keyboard layout USA. Uh, and uh, it supports pretty much every keyboard, so you pick whichever one you need if it's not the, um, if it's not the uh, US keyboard. It'll detect the CD-ROM drives. Um, it will scan um, the CD, and of course right now we've got that um, uh, you know, ISO image uh, loaded in place of a CD-ROM drive. Load some additional components. I'll be um, uh, pausing uh, the uh, recording off and on here uh, and just coming back when it comes to a screen for input. Um, here's where it's detecting the network hardware. Uh, if it fails at this point, that's where you may need to go back and um, uh, 
reset it to uh, network address translation or NAT until you figure out what the story is. Um, here it's trying to configure the network with DHCP. Um, I know it's going to work on my system, but if that fails again, um, you know, go back and uh, reconfigure it to NAT. Um, that should get you through the installation and then you can figure out what the problem is.